Okay, so first tip would be starting with suppliers. So make sure you find suppliers that represent you as a couple. There's no point having somebody that's going to be dead formal if you're really relaxed because it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, so from photographers to dress, where you're getting your wedding dress from, they all have different styles. Um, venue dresses, if you're going down the venue dresses route, and florists, get somebody that's like, do your research in them basically. Um, find people that you like their stuff, stalk their Instagram, we all like to do that. Um, go back through all the wedding pictures, any pictures that's not of weddings, whatever you can to make sure that you like all of their stuff. Wedding tip number two would be at the earliest stage in your planning, start to work on table plans because they're a nightmare. Um, do with the little sticky pad things, draw up a table plan, stick them on, use different colours for different guests. Make sure that you're not, you've not got any guests that hate each other on the same table. Try and put them on, the same, on different sides of the room. Table plans that will work for you. So if you're having a top table, if you're not having a top table, spread them around the room. There's all different layouts, but focus on something that's going to make you feel comfortable. Don't have everybody looking at you if you're a bit nervous and don't want everybody looking at you when you're doing speeches or eating your food. So yeah, planning table plans. Logistics are an absolute nightmare for table plans. Okay, top tip number three would be to plan when you're doing your speeches. So if you are a really confident couple and you groom and anyone else that you've got doing speeches, typically, although we're not the traditional venue and not everyone follows tradition anymore, usually you would have groom, father of the bride and best man, best men in any kind of order. If they're really confident, it doesn't matter as such what order you do them in. A lot of people will dread speeches. So it's a good idea to do them before food or maybe after the starters, as early as you can um, to get people so they're not worrying about the speeches as they're eating. Um, they don't want too much to drink because that's always the way to go. If people are worried, they start, you always see the groom starting to down an extra couple of wines that they wouldn't usually be drinking and then they're not really tasting the food that you've paid for. Um, they're also a little bit too drunk and it's probably not going to end very well. So wedding tip number four would be to plan your morning. Um, I'm obviously a big um, fan of a plan. Clearly doing this job, I wouldn't get very far without one. But planning your morning for bridesmaids and I assume the bride, um, it can be daunting. It can be you thinking about squeezing into the dress, you worried about the pictures from every angle. Try and make sure you eat something. Um, there's Prosecco is flowing in the morning which I've done it myself, had a couple too many and by the time that the meal comes around, I didn't want to eat the food. Um, so try and eat a little bit. You are going to have Prosecco. People are going to be handing you drinks throughout the day. Um, but if you can be a bit more organised, get up a little bit earlier. Um, that probably sounds alien to some that are going to get up at six to get ready anyway. That will probably be me. Um, but you can structure things a little bit better. So have a bacon sandwich while you're having your makeup done, have some cereal, whatever. Like you can find time to eat something and you're not really gonna notice in that dress. Number one wedding planning tip is to organize your timings or to think about your timings. That is obviously the job of a wedding coordinator to help you, but we can only do so much. So say you're getting married in December and you tell us you've booked a four o'clock ceremony. We can't do anything about that then. We can advise and kind of shuffle things around, but ultimately you have picked the time of day. So if you've got a four o'clock ceremony, you're going to run till about half four with the ceremony. You're going to be leaving the wedding barn at about half four, five o'clock. It's dark already in December. So you've missed your chance for kind of group pictures outside. Yes, you can get them in the lights, which look really, really pretty, but you've not got chance to get the daytime ones and the nighttime ones, which you would get in summer. Also, obviously the other extreme is if you pick an 11 o'clock ceremony, you are then gonna have lots of drunken guests or people going home really, really early because it's such a long day. For me, getting going to an 11 o'clock wedding and having to be there at 10, I'd have to be up at like seven to get ready. Um, so it's about making sure, yes, you want the most new venue, especially if it's exclusive hire, but you don't want to drag people there too early. You don't want a lull in the middle of the day. You don't want people drinking and drinking and drinking and being really drunk by the time that it gets to the wedding breakfast because then nobody's eating the food. 
Um, and just think about everything. So I know that if it was me, I'd want pictures in the daytime with the light and pictures when it goes dark as well. So I'd be going for like one, two o'clock maybe. Um, and obviously depends on the time of year as well. If you're gonna go for winter, you need to make it as early as possible um, if you want those pictures. If you're not bothered, then that's absolutely fine. Um, but there's a lot that kind of comes with planning your ceremony time, especially depending on venues as well. Um, so we get nice sunsets at the farm, so you wouldn't want to miss those, which you are going to if you go and pick like a four or five o'clock ceremony.